All right, guys, quick little overview on the Polish P83. Now, I picked this one up about two weeks ago, put about 100 rounds through it, give or take. Um, not a whole lot, but more than enough on an old Milserp gun to know whether or not it is a good shooter and or reliable. Now, um, the Polish P83s were the replacement for the P64s, all right? But they honestly have much more in common with Makarov than they do the P64s, mostly in size, weight, and capacity. Now, real quick, I'll go through the specs here, um, but it pretty much falls in line with a lot of the other Cold War era pistols, okay? So we've got something that is a 9mm Makarov or 9x18, fires from a single stack magazine, 8 plus 1 in the chamber you've got a double action single action trigger hammer fired pretty rudimentary combat sights uh, safety decocker and this european style paddle magazine release here at the rear now the only real difference between this and a lot of these other cold war era 9 by 18 guns is how it disassembles um, instead of pulling down on the trigger guard like you do in a lot of those this actually has a little paddle or something right there whatever you want to call that that releases and then you pull the slide back up and over to remove the slide from the top of the gun then you have access to all the internals and the barrel and everything else and the reason they did that was because this is not a forged steel frame this is a stamped sheet metal frame that is welded together very much like an AK-47 um, has a uh, stamped sheet metal receiver um, so it's a little bit different a little bit lighter weight because of that than it would normally be um, but it's slightly different design so that's really the only difference now what, if anything, makes this gun special? Um, and to me, it's twofold. It is a combination of both shootability as a defensive tool and price. All right, now let's talk about the shootability first. Um, this, to me, has some advantages over something like, let's say, the Makarov. This is kind of the go-to standard for Milserp 9x18 guns, right? Um, and there are three things on this gun that I feel are better than they are on the Makarov or the P64 or whatever. One is going to be the hammer. You can see here on the hammer, we have a hammer that is specifically designed to be very easy to manipulate with your thumb. Very easy to manipulate, as opposed to this little nub that sticks out <laughs> on the Makarov. Okay. Um, the second thing is going to be the magazine release itself. Now, the magazine release functions the same way as far as the gun is concerned, um, as far as you push this little uh, tab back and it releases the magazine so you've got your magazine in there all right you push that little tab back and the magazine pops out right but the difference is that on the Makarov there's just a little nub sticking out of the bottom that you have to put your thumb here and kind of push back to release and then the magazine pops out about that much whereas on the P83 you have that same design but you also have this little paddle that they have coming off the back of it that gives you more leverage so it feels lighter it's easier to push it's easier to activate your magazine release all right and that makes it much easier when you're doing magazine changes and then uh, third and in my opinion most important is the trigger now single action on these is pretty much right in line with the Makarov I'd say well, I don't know six pounds give or take um, maybe a little bit lighter could be it's hard to tell without a gauge but what really makes it shine is the double action trigger. Now on a Makarov, it's about 15 pounds. On a P64, it's about 25 pounds, which is ridiculous. Um, on this, very easily, in my opinion, 11 pounds. It is very, very lightweight, right in line with just about any double action revolver out there on the market. It is a very, very nice double action trigger pull. So when you combine those three things, the hammer, the magazine release, the trigger, um, and compare that to something like a Makarov, um, to me, it is a far more shootable weapon as a defensive tool than the Makarov or, or, or a lot of these other guns are. Now, let's talk about price. Going price on these right now is 220 bucks. That's pretty much anywhere you go, whether it's JG Sales, whether it's AIM Surplus, whether it's Classic Firearms, wherever. I happened to pick this one up when it was on sale for $199, but $220 is the going price right now. Now, once you pay for shipping, and depending on what your FFL charges to transfer the gun, you're probably looking at around $250 for this gun, as compared to $350 for this gun. And as I said, $250, bucks, and it's a better shooter than the Makarov. It's got better features. Than the Makarov. It is more suited to be a defensive tool than the Makarov, in my opinion. So, that is why I think it is a special gun. $250, give or take, out the door, and you have something that is a good, effective defensive tool that is military and police proven for decades. To me, that's kind of hard to beat.